Hello students, my name is Alok Simwal and today I am going to talk about quenching in fluorimetry and phosphorimetry. As we all know, emission of visible light by a substance after absorbing any external radiation is known as fluorescence. Examples include riboflavin, vitamin A, aniline, quinine, etc. In this picture, you can see a saturated solution of 0 0.025 gram riboflavin in 200 ml water after UV exposure. The emission of light from the excited state of a molecule can be quenched by interaction with another molecule. This is known as fluorescence quenching. Quenching refers to decrease in fluorescence intensity due to specific effects of constituents of solution. This may occur due to various factors like pH, concentration, temperature, viscosity, presence of oxygen, heavy metals, or specific chemical substances. Quinine is a fluorescent substance. In this picture, you can see quenching of quinine fluorescence in presence of chloride ions. Right test tube contains original quinine solution, while the left test tube contains quenched quinine solution. Quenching in anthracene occurs due to the presence of thiocyanate. In quinine, due to the presence of chloride, tryptophan in the presence of iodide, tyrosine in presence of disulfide, and naphthalene in presence of nitric oxide. So these are quenching agents and these are fluorescent substances. Next is types of quenching. There are four types of quenching. First one, self quenching. Second, chemical quenching. Third, static quenching. And fourth one, collision quenching. First of all, we will understand cell quenching. Cell quenching is also known as concentration quenching. It occurs when the concentration of fluorescent substance increases in a sample solution. The fluorescence intensity is reduced in highly concentrated solution with more than 50 microgram per ml concentration. Here in this picture you can see calibration curves for low concentration solution as well as high concentration solution. So for low concentration solution the fluorescence intensity increases with the increasing concentration of fluorescent substance. While in case of high concentration fluorescence intensity decreases with the increasing concentration of fluorescent substance. Now this effect is known as self quenching or self-absorption. This spectrum denotes influence of concentration on the fluorescence of phenol solution. In this case, the fluorescence intensity increases with the increase in concentration till 150 microgram per ml concentration. After that, it decreases with increase in concentration. Second one is chemical quenching. Chemical quenching occurs due to the factors like change in pH, presence of oxygen, halides, and heavy metals. For example, aniline at pH 5 to 13 gives fluorescence, but at pH less than 5 and greater than 13, it does not exhibit fluorescence. Presence of halides like chloride, bromide, iodide, and electron withdrawing groups like nitro, carboxylic, etc. leads to quenching. Besides pH and presence of halides, heavy metals also causes quenching. Third type is collisional quenching. Collisional quenching occurs by the interaction of a quencher molecule with an excited molecule of the fluorescent substance. A simplified mechanism can be written to describe this process. In this mechanism, F denotes fluorescent substance. F star is the excited state of fluorescent substance. H nu is energy where H is Planck constant and nu is the frequency of radiation, Q is quencher molecule. When this excited fluorescent molecule interacts with the quencher, it results in decrease of excitation energy by a non-radiative energy transfer from F star to Q. It results in less or no fluorescence. For example, quenching of quinine drug by chloride ion or quenching of tryptophan by iodide ion follow collisional quenching process. Last one is static quenching. Static quenching occurs at the ground state of fluorescent molecule. This occurs due to complex formation. 
Static quenching can be simplified by following mechanism. Here a complex formation occurs between the fluorescent molecule at the ground state and the quencher molecule through a strong coupling. When the radiation is incident upon this complex, it results in energy transfer from the fluorescent molecule to quencher, which results in excitation of the quencher. Caffeine and related xanthines and purines reduce intensity of riboflavin by static mechanism. Quenching that occurs due to oxygen also follows this mechanism. So the conclusion is quenching is an undesirable effect and the possibility of encountering this type of interference should always be evaluated in developing a fluorometric assay. Thank you.